kicks off for the SEC title. anticipated matchups in all of college basketball. The Arkansas Razorbacks against the Wildcats of Kentucky for the Southeastern Conference crowd. Here's how these two teams arrived at this championship matchup. Arkansas had to struggle to get by Vanderbilt and then handed Alabama a setback yesterday. Kentucky, meanwhile, rather handily over Auburn and Florida to reach the championship matchup. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Atlanta. 29,000 plus on hand today. It should be something special. It's not the first time these two teams have met this year. First time ever for an SEC tournament title. But in the regular season six weeks ago, back in Fayetteville, it was a regular season classic. One of the top games in all of college basketball this past year as Nolan Richardson, the defending tournament champion Razorbacks, hosting Rick Pitino and the Wildcats of Kentucky. And a wild one it was. Tony Delk helped Kentucky with a career-high 31 points, many like that three-pointer from the outside. But in the end, it was much too much Corliss Williamson. 28 points for the sensational All-American. And then it was Hog Heaven with an 18-footer going down for a two-point Arkansas win in a 94-92 thriller. My partner is Jimmy Dykes. And Jimmy, that was six weeks ago. I don't think much has changed, unless maybe these two teams have gotten a little bit better. Yeah, I think Arkansas has probably in particular. Arkansas really needed a challenge put in front of them back then. They had just come off a really tough loss to Alabama. That game was a jump start. They now have won 12 out of their last 13 and playing as well as anybody in college basketball. The defending national champions, they need special events. Today's a special day. You know, Rick Pitino, I don't know if he's trying to do a psych job on the selection committee, but he says Kentucky's the number one seed. Doesn't matter what happens in this game. I tend to disagree. Yeah, I agree with you, and I disagree with Coach Pitino. The guy's got a shot at being a number one seed, but it's not a lock. I think this game today is going to decide who's the number one seed in the Southeast Regional. I talked with Nolan Richardson before the ball game. He said, how can we not be playing for the number one seed? We're the defending national champions. We're 27 and 5. If we win today, we will have beaten Kentucky head to head both times. He's got a good point. Great matchups throughout this game. Corey Beck and Tony Delk will be one of the classics to watch in the backcourt. This should be something special. Arkansas and Kentucky, the Southeastern Conference crowd, and a number one seed on the line when we come back. Hey, you can choose the color, the style, even the way it rings, but you can't choose. A bit of a change at the center spot. Elmer Martin had started the last 10 games, but Darnell Robinson gets the nod today. For Rick Pitino's Kentucky Wildcats, the starting lineup with Jeff Shepard and Tony Delk in the backcourt, McCarty and Rhodes up front, and Mark Pope at the center spot. Kentucky going for another tournament title. Arkansas has never won the SEC tourney title. On the regular season, though, they tied for the top spot in the West at 12 and 4. Kentucky took the East at 14 and 2. It's what everybody in this conference and everybody in the country wanted, and we've got it, and we're underway. Rhodes had it stripped away, picked up underneath, and Andre Riddick draws a foul immediately. I think it's important that Riddick gets involved in this game early. Now, he hasn't been producing some great numbers. He hasn't been getting the minutes that he got early in the season, but that's a good start for Rick Pitino to get Andre Riddick involved in the flow of this game from the outset. SEC, one of their premier shot blockers, not one of their premier free throw shooters, but just as I say that, he drops the first one in. Riddick about 49% on the year on his free throws. You can see his field goal percentage much higher, and he buries them both. That way, Andre. So Kentucky with the opening two. And McDaniel outside, buries it three. Well, both teams come in concerned about the perimeter game that uh, the opponents have. Clint McDaniel, that's a very good start for Nolan Richardson's club. I love that you talk to the coaches before the game. They both yeah. had about the same thing to say about how to prevent the other team from winning the game. 
Bobcat picks up the foul. But they are similar teams and they're great shooting teams and high intensity defense. We see Corey Beck right here and that's going to be an interesting matchup all afternoon. Corey Beck really gets in your face and he triggers that defensive pressure for Arkansas as well as anybody that Nolan Richardson can put on the floor. And Beck knows the double zero. Tony Dowd had a career high down at Fayetteville of 31. He got it in hand with Thurman on him. McCarty, he has really come out in the last month. Spin move on the baseline and Donald McCall's offensive foul. Well, when you catch it down low today, Brad, you better catch it and react quickly because both teams really run at shooters. Do that right there. You see McDaniel drawing the foul and Robinson coming from behind. There's no time to play with that thing today. Speaking of the officials, Don Rutledge made that call. John Flockerty, Don Rutledge, and Andre Patillo are officials for this SEC title game. Well, Kentucky playing outstanding defense all season long, holding opponents to right at 40% from the field. They've really done a nice job out of the zone in the last three or four weeks. Nice look inside and a great move by Corliss Williamson. And Arkansas by three early. Rhodes guarded by Kermit on the perimeter. Shepard kicks back outside. And the whistle and Delk with a turnover. The tough combination when you got strength and finesse like Corliss Williamson just showed right there. And he has great concentration inside. You watch him, he'll get the contact, but his head and eyes are always up on the target. Big time player. And in big time games, he seems to play his best. 28, as we mentioned in the regular season matchup between these two clubs. Feet inside. Williamson crosses it out to Corey Beck. Beck's not a big outside shooter. Darnell Robinson with a hook on the baseline. But he's got more offense than Elmer Martin. That's why he's in the starting lineup. But he's young. He's been inconsistent. Therefore, you want him to also get involved early. It took him almost the whole season to get in shape, and he is now. Rhodes try to go for a slam, and Robinson with a foul. And that's too early on Darnell Robinson, and that might bring somebody off the Arkansas bench in a hurry. Rick Pitino, 11-0 in SEC tournament games. He's never lost one. And on the other side, the guy that won the whole prize, Nolan Richardson, who has played Rick Pitino in the SEC tournament before, but never in the championship round. Roderick Rhodes averaging... 13 a game. I think Nolan Richardson and Rick Pitino both understand as well as any coaches in the country, Brad, how to get their teams to the magic level at the right times during the season. You can only pull on those strings so many times when you're dealing with young people, and they both got these teams playing as well as possible heading into the tournament. Teaching at the right moment. And both of them, I think, have looked forward to this possibility of this matchup. Robinson double stripped away by Rhodes from behind, and McCarty will come out of there with it. Rhodes fouled by Corliss Williamson. I think Arkansas is going to have to be very careful of that matchup right there. Corliss Williamson on Rhodes because Rhodes may be the most versatile offensive player on the floor this afternoon has the size to take you inside and the leading free throw shooter for Kentucky in terms of attempts that tells you he's very active with the basketball. Tough for Corliss to guard him. Roderick, 41st Kentucky player to go over the 1,000 point mark. You know you got a pretty good program when you've got 41 or 42 guys that have scored over 1,000. Both Tony Delk and Roderick Rhodes have done so. 6'7 junior out of Jersey City. Got them both that time. Three for Rhodes. The lead of Arkansas has been cut to a deuce. Beck almost had it taken away, but now the Razorbacks with numbers, and it's Thurman for three. Almost got it up off the top of the backboard. McCarty and Rhodes will come down three on one Kentucky. Tie game. A whistle and a foul. 
Well, there will be no time to celebrate for either team today after a made field goal. The guards especially have got to be aware to rotate back and get back for defensive balance purposes. I look at Nolan Richardson, I talked to him before the ball game, and he said, you know, our kids have really looked forward to this matchup. We beat them in Fayetteville, but we were all hoping that both of us could clear our way into the finals. But Daniel has one rattle out. Clint had hit 26 of his last 31 free throws, so he's been on a tear from the strike. And leads the SEC in steals. Razorbacks back in front by one as we are just over three minutes in. Kentucky's first field goal took them three minutes to pick up. Roderick Rhodes gets called for kind of a cheap offensive foul. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's enough contact here to call it. You watch Rhodes. Yeah, he's there's a bump there. Scotty Thurman, nice job of rotating in. A bump, but it won't cause a bruise, I don't think. No, no not at all. No. <laughs> Hope on Robinson on top. Williamson wheels on McCarty and got his own rebound. Back up and in. So strong down low. Well, you can't make let him make that initial duck move inside and get that post position right in front of the rim. Jeff Shepard from right here in Atlanta. I asked him if he's got half of Peachtree City here, which is just south of town, and he said, I think so. And he just picked up a second foul, though, on the perimeter trying to play defense. He has a lot of characteristics of a young man I had the pleasure to coach when I was an assistant at Kentucky, Rex Chapman. He's got that, that big hop, that big bounce. He can create his own look off the dribble. Great elevation on his jump shot. Chapman was his favorite player, too. He's uh, admitted that several times. McDaniel outside for three, and Rhodes will pull it off the backside. And now Arkansas comes up with a turnover. Thurman, the triple, got it. What awareness by Corliss Williamson to know that Scotty Thurman was spotted up in the corner. Kentucky with back-to-back -back turnovers as Epps has to fly over row one. I'm glad Anthony's got that much hop in his game, but we've had a couple of dead broadcasters over there. Timeout with 15-52 remaining in the first half. And Arkansas, thanks to that steal in a bucket, pushes their lead out to 13-9. There's the field goal so far early. Well, you've got great individual talent on this floor. You look at two of them right there in Thurman and Williamson. Kentucky's got a slew of them. But you also have individuals that really understand the team concept. And Nolan Richardson and Rick Pitino, they coach it as well as anybody in the country. To have so many weapons and to be able to utilize all of them is what these two teams have been able to accomplish. Corey Beck, there's what he does so well. Thurman outside, got another one. Don't get him hot or you'll be in a whole bunch of trouble. What a rebound by Corey Beck at the point guard spot. He's the second leading offensive rebounder that the Razorbacks have. Very difficult to match up for Tony Dell. McCarty in the paint, a little strong, got his own rebound and got it in. Four for Waller and the lead cut back to five. Knocking it down to Williamson. Colt can't stay with him. Six already for Corliss. He's got the power inside. Thurman's got the two threes outside. And again, a seven-point Arkansas lead. Rhodes, offensive foul. Corey Beck held his ground. And Rhodes, two fouls, both offensive so far. You know, Thurman and that Corliss Williamson combination inside outside is so difficult to cover. You got to choose and take one. And look at Corliss Williamson establishes great catching position at the mid block level. Watch Rhodes. The only play Corey Beck can make is the charge right there. He doesn't have the height to challenge the shot. He's got to hold his ground and hope the whistle goes his way. Arkansas on an 11 4 run here in the last couple of minutes. Robinson, he doesn't mind it out there. That's why. Hit one of those yesterday to help get the Razorbacks on their 
run to win their semifinal game to get here. The lead is 10. Antoine Walker has just checked in on a cut. He's coming off a career high game of 21. So the freshman's starting to come on for Kentucky. Thurman with a left hand. Hasn't missed yet. Well, that's what amazed me last night as I started to prepare for this basketball game in detail was how young this Kentucky team is. One senior in Reddick arrest them. Boy, that's, this team is just going to get better and better. It gives everybody else in the conference a headache. That's <laughs> Orlis Williamson picks up his second foul. A concern for Rick Pitino coming in was the physical style of play that Arkansas will throw at you. Walker and McCarty, Pope, those guys inside, they've got to battle against Corliss Williamson and the big bodies of Dwight Stewart, Darnell Robinson. And even the guards for Arkansas, so physical with their hands, very active, bumping and chesting you a lot defensively. You've got to adjust to it. McCarty goes out and Pope, or rather, uh, Cricket comes in. So you just take out a 6'9 guy, put another 6'9 guy in there. Corliss Williamson will sit with two fouls. And that brings Lee Wilson off the Arkansas bench. Mark Pope's been sensational in the SEC tourney as he had a career high 19 against Auburn in the first round game. Pope the transfer from Washington, former Pac-10 freshman of the year. A guy that Rick Pitino says works as hard or harder than any player I've ever had. That's kind of a mouthful. And that guy's had several. I really like how Pope works and gets himself open inside. He understands how to play the game. I doubt that Coach Richardson's going to like that three-pointer from Robinson. The first one, maybe. That one rushed a little bit and a little too deep. Epps trying to feed the wing. It's broken up, and that's Clint McDaniel in the open floor. what I talked about when one guard for Kentucky penetrates the other one has got to fly out of there because Arkansas runs the floor but I tell you when that shot's taken they got a designated flyer and they're going at you. Corey Beck the inspirational leader getting the hog fans on their feet and they have reason to cheer. It's an 11 point Razorback lead 13.07 to go in the first half. Turnovers early. Kentucky, they're paying the price for those seven turnovers, including that Clint McDaniel lay in a moment ago. Wilson on a lob underneath. That one almost went in. Robinson, not a good pass. And the walk. Yet another turnover. Now Kentucky knows they can't keep doing that and stay in this ball game. So I think you describe Arkansas's defense at best disruptive. They try to get you making plays you're not accustomed to making. And right now the big guys for Kentucky having to put the ball on the floor a little more than they would like. McDaniel's going to get a breather and Alex Dillard will take his spot in the backcourt. Dwight Stewart has checked in also for Arkansas and on the Kentucky side McCarty back off the bench and Chris Harrison in for the first time. So some changes from both sides. Underneath all alone is Wilson. He missed a slam. Credit Harrison for getting back just to rattle him a little bit from down low. Walker, he's going to take it in himself. That's not a typical freshman play right there. I mean, he hesitated on the perimeter, read the defense, and then took it till the defense stopped him. Unfortunately, it wasn't until the front of the rim. Corey back a great lead for Lee Wilson. Still an 11-point Arkansas lead at 27-16. Cricket trying to leave it for McCarty. Another Kentucky turnover. Here comes Corey Beck. All alone. Rick Patino, no timeout called, waiting for a TV break. You know he's frustrated. His team's down 13. just can't get any kind of rhythm, any kind of natural flow on the offensive end. Last time, Cricket had a six-foot shot and passed it up. Walker misses a tray, and Beck runs down the rebound. Ahead to Dillard. 
And back on top. Stewart for three. And Walker will hold it for Kentucky. Epps, Harrison, McCarty, Frickett, and Walker on the floor for the Wildcats. And that's a much different looking lineup. Harrison sparked him yesterday with a couple quick threes when he came off the bench. Another Kentucky turnover as Prickett lost the handle. Rick Patino's Wildcats have turned it over 10 times in nine minutes of play. 11.03 left first half. A little frustration for the Kentucky coach. Play set, but everything else might be a crapshoot right now. Yeah, I'm not so sure with Kansas losing that you got now Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, Arkansas. North Carolina thinks going to take care of business and be in the East. But then those other three teams right there, Kansas, Kentucky, Arkansas, I really think they're going to fight for those last two uh, number one number one seeds going in. With Kansas having lost, Rick Pitino has said, as we said at the top of the show, he thinks Kentucky's a number one regardless of what happens here today. Well, I, I think uh, he's hoping that uh, everybody's buying that theory because right now it's the Razorbacks 29-16, and I know they're thinking number one seed without a doubt. Survivor of this one's got one no matter how you slice it. McDaniel open for three. Nailed it. The three pointers are dropping for Arkansas, and Kentucky is going to have to hustle to get back in this thing. Down 16 points. Nice feed inside, but Pope's double teamed, and he loses a handle again. Remember the SEC final a couple of years ago in Lexington when it was all Kentucky in the semifinals against Arkansas, just routing them, and Arkansas came back, stormed back, and made a game of it. Kentucky might have to have that kind of rally today to make this a game. Hell ball, possession arrow still stays with Arkansas. Well, Kentucky's very capable. When you talk about a well-balanced attack, you got two guys averaging in double figures, but then the rest of them are 9, 7, 8, 7, 7. Rick Pitino, they can score points in a hurry, but their defense has got to be solidified right now. Still Arkansas out of bounds. Just past the midway point, first half. 9.59 to go from the Georgia Dome in a game that has been all Razorbacks so far. Yesterday, Kentucky had kind of a slow start against Florida, too. Their shots weren't dropping, and all of a sudden, they hit a streak where everything went in. They're going to need that kind of comeback here. And they get a start with a rebound from Rose. Well, they got their guy in the game right now, Chris Harrison, down there in the corner, spotted up, that has big shot ability. Wilson fouls Pope down low. It'll be Lee Wilson's first foul. Points off turnovers, unbelievable for Arkansas. You know, Arkansas very efficient, not only in getting turnovers, you see the strong move inside gets poked the free throw strike, but Arkansas forces turnovers, but they're very efficient in converting those into points. And you can see, as Jimmy's talking about, 22 off the turnovers, 22 points for just two for Kentucky. Very important today for both clubs, Brad, to convert on the second free throw. It allows that press to get set up. And that won't happen. Both missed him. Davo Arimats, who just checked in. He's an excellent three-point shooter, too. But I don't know who isn't on the Arkansas team, even the big guys. Here's Arimats. There's the three. Good call. Wow. 35 to 16. Shepard and Harrison have a two-on-one. Harrison will pull up and use the glass. His first basket. And Harrison is really a three-point specialist. The guy, I think most of his three-point shots, only about six or seven field goal attempts this year have not been from the three. You've got to shade him. I saw a kid yesterday at Texas, Brandy Perryman, who hit a huge shot for Tom Penders Club. Same way, you've got to shade and Make sure you know where those guys are at all times. Elmer Martin threw up an air ball that will turn into the Kentucky possession. 
That last shot by Harrison was the first Kentucky points in over three minutes. And you can't go dry stretches against the defending national champs and expect to stay in the game. And Arkansas tore it already from outside the arc, six of 11. And when they came into this game, they had 290 three-pointers, just 11 shy of their school record they set last year. Well, they're more than halfway past that 11. They might end up with a school record just in this one alone. Harrison, he'll take a three. He's an excellent shooter, ran down his own miss. Rod Rhodes on a baseline, Roderick, first field goal. Cuts it down to 15 for Arkansas. Stewart spinning on Riddick. Riddick rejected it and took a couple photographers out. Watch Harrison create a, a look off the dribble right here for his teammate Rhodes. Takes it in and pulls up, avoids the charge. That's much better offense right now out of Kentucky. Not a good shot at all by Dwight Stewart. Andre, the rejector, they call him. I almost called him the projector, I think, when he got out there in camera roll. Took a couple of guys with him. <laughs> Robinson, Thurman, Beck, McDaniel, and Williamson back in there now. That's the starting group for the Razorbacks. Williamson wants it. Yeah. And he has it rejected. Back-to-back -back blocks by Andre Riddick. Came in with 36. He's got a couple just on these possessions alone. Corliss establishes himself on the block in great position, but watch Riddick. Does a good job of staying down. Now watch his timing. Boom, right up there at the top. That's how you block shots. They're going to need a lot more of that because Kentucky on the short end by 15 with exactly eight minutes left in the first half. Find something, man. That will make a lovely gift. Can I wrap it for you? Feel free to browse. You have an eye. Excellent shot blocker. Look at that right there. All-time shot block. Kentucky. Quickly moving up that list. It's a pretty good company. Thurman off the inbounds. Buries a three around a pick. Scotty Thurman. Oh, they're going to say inside the three-point line. Thought one official gave it the three sign. They'll give him two. Shepard. Riddick trying to tip it in. Arkansas by 17. Fifteen on the shot clock. Beck found a little bit of a crease and handed it to Williamson. Wave it off. A push by Riddick down on the baseline before that shot by Williamson. Championship week finishing with a flurry on ESPN. It's Carolina and Wake Forest. Tobacco Road ACC final at 3. And at 5 o'clock Eastern, in progress, the power of our Big West Championship, Nevada and Long Beach State. At 6 o'clock, it'll be John Saunders, Dick Vitale, and Digger Phelps with a selection show. And then Mississippi Valley State and Texas Southern for the SWAC championship to get the 64th and final team involved. It is championship week. It has been something else, 61 games in all over the course of the week. And maybe none bigger than this one. And so far, it's belonged to Arkansas. They lead 37 to 20 with 7-10 left first half. Riddick's going to kick it back out to Shepard. He'll take the jumper. What great offense by Shepard. The ball fake froze the defense. Just allowed him enough to step in off of one dribble. Knock down the 15-foot shot. Tony Duck still on the Kentucky bench. He has been held scoreless. And Scotty Thurman has just lights it up. Ten for Thurman. Every time Kentucky gets a basket to try to get a little bit of momentum back, Arkansas has got an answer. Shepard flies up and looks like a little bit of Rex Chapman there. He's got six. And McDaniel flies into the computer section. I guess that's hard drive or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Kentucky trying to pick up the intensity on defense. See if they can get a stop or force a turnover. 
Arkansas has not turned it over much today, that's for sure. There's one. Rick Pitino thought Arkansas should have been charged with a turnover on that last series. And it uh, brought a reaction. <laughs> this is March Madness, and he's got the mad part down. Fierce competitor now. Kentucky has solidified things, I think, on the defensive end. They've got to get their offense on track. Shepard right now, he's creating his own look. But nothing off of their structure. Our Arkansas is very active. There's Delt There's around a pick. There's a little bit of structure. There's Tony Delt's first bucket. That's what they need more of right there, creating looks for each other. Corliss Williamson, he walked with it. Back-to-back -back Arkansas turnovers. And Kentucky knowing they've got a crawl before they walk and walk before they run, trying to inch back in this thing. Watch Corliss, he catches it right now. His left foot's his pivot foot, and he picked it up before he put it on the floor. Proper call. I think if it wouldn't have been a traveling violation, it would have been maybe a foul on him for that look. It was a nice move to get away with it, but now with the official standing right in front of you. Here comes Walker on the run. Rhodes, three. And Riddick tried to keep it alive, but Epps couldn't handle it. Darnell Robinson, open floor. And Riddick made sure that he's going to have to earn them from the free throw line. Problem is, that's going to be three fouls on Riddick. Great hustle play by Riddick, but a mistake made by the young Darnell Robinson. You're taking it in the open floor in transition. you got to get there in a hurry and take it up strong with two hands. He tried to finesse it at the end, allowed Riddick to get involved in the play. And Darnell is not going to throw you with his free throw shooting, usually. Unless you like adventures, because that's what it is. He <laughs> steps to the stripe. Well, like Andre Riddick before him, we kind of make sport of his free throw shooting and uh, quiets him. He's had a pretty good start. Six points for the sophomore on Oakland, California. And made the start today as well. Normally not a starter. Kept alive by Thurman off the miss, but then picked up by Epps. Epps trying to feed Rhodes. Good look down low. Now it's down to a dozen. Getting a little bit closer. The lead was once Arkansas by 19, and now it goes back the other way again. We've got a foul down low on Arkansas. Both teams really understand how to utilize their big guys in transition. They run them right down the middle of the floor and force the defense to choose a side to guard you, and that is very tough to combat. Foul was on Scotty Thurman, talking with John Clockerty about it, saying, John, really, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. Watch next time a little closer. <laughs> Meanwhile, Roderick Rhodes will step to the free throw line with an opportunity to make this a 10-point game. You've got a great crew today that will, they understand the importance of letting players voice their opinion from time to time as long as they don't step out of line. They communicate well, very good job of preventive officiating. I think these guys do. Clogarty, Rutledge, and Patello as good as anybody in the country. And both coaches, and Rick Pitino in particular, said, I hope the officials just let us play because it'll be that much more fun for the 29,000 in the place. So far, they have. Rhodes, eight points, four of five from the free throw line for Roderick. Look at the Arkansas-Kentucky players on the screen right there, and I had the privilege to play at Arkansas, coach at Arkansas, also coach at Kentucky. And you talk about special, special places for basketball in this country. These two programs got it going on. They care for the sport, tremendous fan support, and they play, they play with such a pride for the entire state. Every night out, I don't think anybody else in the country has that. Even along Tobacco Road, they got to split it up. But not Arkansas, Kentucky. It's a one-man show. You've got a better feel for these two programs than anybody in the building. We got a lot of people in here. <laughs> Kentucky on an 8-0, uh, 8-1 run over the last minute and a half. And all of a sudden, 40 to 30. The makings of another one of the classics. We might get to the 90-point mark. Nice big, Darnell Robinson. Spins and buries it on the baseline. Back. Chest to chest with Epps right in front of us. Walker, great baseline drive. Woo. Six for the freshman out of Chicago. 
talk about a rise, a reach, and a ram with a, with quickness. <laughs> that was pretty. Here's Alex Dillard, and don't give him an inch because he'll take a 30-footer on you. And usually, it's get somebody an inch, they take a foot. You're right. You give him an inch, the 30-footer. Down low, double teams. White Stewart up and down. Jump ball, possession arrow to Kentucky. What a nice shot by Robinson. That's excellent defense by Pope, making him take a fadeaway jump shot. Watch Walker rise. That Arkansas defense just doesn't rotate over quick enough. If you don't rotate over as soon as he makes his move, it's too late. Once he puts it on the floor, he's in front of the rim. Kentucky can get it to a single-digit lead for Arkansas if they score this trip. Epps up in the air, found Walker on the baseline. He had trouble finding the handle, though, and he was already in midair and missed it in close. Beck gives a look and missed a layup. Good-looking play, but he didn't finish it. Last time Kentucky was within single digits, it was 18 to 11. White Stewart with a push. And now Cricket will give it. Give the Wildcats a chance to get it down to eight. Not a smart foul at all by Stewart because Cricket, if there is a guy on the floor that is no threat at all for a three-point shot, it's him. He's not going to beat you off the dribble from 30 feet away. He's back off of play containment defense at that point. Especially when uh, Dwight's giving away quite a bit of quickness. <laughs> There's the numbers last season as compared to this season. Uh, Jared Prickett. His first point of the day. He's had some big games against Arkansas. Though. He had a 20-point rebound game in a regular season game against the Razorbacks. Trying to get it down to an eight-point margin and does. Well, once it was 19, the lead has been sliced to eight. 42, 34, Razorbacks. This as up tempo as it is to get in the flow and allow all those kind of things to come to you. You got to step in and produce. And Rick Latino's got some guys that do it in a vengeance. There's two of them, Pope and Walker, right there. Walker's got six off the bench. Pope a couple of big rebounds. And this freshman, he's just starting to feel it now, I think. And uh, made in the mold and maybe has some of the same qualities as a Jamal Mashburn, according to Rick Pitino. And if he fills that bill over the next three years for Kentucky, I think they'll be happy. I was just watching him. He reminds me also of another guy named Walker that played at Kentucky. Yeah. About 6'8", athletic, could really cover, explode to the, explode to the basket. Probably got a little bit better offense than Jimmy Walker. Robinson has had a good game so far. That hook doesn't go, but back again on the baseline with a rebound, and Thurman nails a three. How many times are we going to see that today? Beck rebound, kick it to Thurman, let Scotty bury a triple. Well, Rick Pitino just hollered out, you can't leave him. There's, if there's one guy on the floor that you cannot allow to be set, it's Scotty Thurman. Walker, great catch down low. Jump ball, possession arrow will go to Arkansas. Thurman has been the Arkansas offense so far. Six of seven from the field, three of four, three pointers. He had 22 in the regular season game between these two clubs and was four out of five from three point range in that one. You've got to really crowd Scotty Thurman. I mean, here's another statistic that backs that up. He only goes to the free throw stripe about two times a game. That tells you from a coaching standpoint, he's not a driver and a finisher. He puts it on the floor. It's one, maybe two bounces at the most just to create a better jump shot opportunity. And so he pitches his tent on the outside and waits for the ball to come to him. Now Robinson had numbers, but maybe wisely slows up and waits for his troops to help him with 2.25 left in the half. 45-36. Remots on a runner. Didn't get the roll. Walker the rebound. Walker's been big for Kentucky. Off the catch bench. Oh, plenty of time to look at it. Got it! Here comes Kentucky. They're only down six. 
He hit a big three yesterday, and you just got to guard Polk. You think he's a center. He's not going to stroke it. He's shooting 40%, 47% on the year from out there. That's their first three-pointer of the day. You talk about nice timing. Under two minutes and a half. Thurman trying to work for a shot. Walker, nice defense. Remonts, and he nails a three. Talk about great shooters on both sides. Lots of bullets in the guns for these two clubs. Foul, Delk, and McDaniel got tangled up. John Walker is going to call it on Clint McDaniel. Tony Delk has been quiet. One field goal. Arkansas foul on number 12, Clint McDaniel. His first personal ninth team foul. And while Tony is a great shooter from the outside, he doesn't Lucky always take that to the free throw line. McCarty will come back in. Bolt will sit down. He'll get a big round of applause from the Wildcat faithful. Tony Delk will go to the line for Kentucky. Shooting one and one. Always coaching and always teaching. His Coutinho who already had a couple of words for Bolt before he got to the bench. And Delk did miss the free throw. Can't afford to give up any free ones in this game. McDaniel. His three rattles out. Darnell Robinson fouled by Prickett down low. He would have had one in close. Prickett did well to strip the ball. Deb Kaufman coming up at halftime with first half stats and highlights on Sports Smash. And halftime is just a minute and five away. Alex Diller will check in and Scotty Thurman comes out. Points, three rebounds, 50% from the free throw line for Darnell Robinson, who came in overweight at the beginning of the season. Apparently heard an NBA scout say, yeah, we like you around 270, and Nolan Richardson said, I like you around 255. <laughs> he didn't play a lot until he got down to that. Much more important for your current head coach to like you more than <laughs> that's <your> right. <laughs> future head coach, because you may not have a future head coach if you don't please the current head coach. You got it. He's had a big first half throw. Double figures and points, three rebounds. He'll get a breather as White Stewart will take his spot. And he gets a pat on the backside from the head hog. 105 left, an 11 point Arkansas lead. Almost threw it away. Epps got around a double team. Wide opens Prickett. Great job by Prickett to run right in front of the basket. He knew the guard would find him there. Nice job of avoiding the double team at the half court also. You know, I think psychologically it'd be huge if Kentucky could go to the locker room in the single digit deficit instead of being down 11 or 12. Right now it's nine. Yeah, can I tell you what? The, uh, the butter was really starting to slip off the biscuit early for <laughs> Kentucky and they fought their way back into this thing. Turnover as Epps comes up with a steal. Just what the Kentucky doctor ordered. And now they can play for the last one if they so choose. They take seven. Down seven at halftime. Six if they hit a three. Let's see what kind of shot they get. Delk trying to work free on the baseline, but McDaniel is right on it. Epps under six. Got a hurry. He got the shot, got the basket, and a chance for a three-point play. Oh, boy. Talk about big. His first bucket of the day couldn't be much bigger for Rick Pitino. What great penetration. Now the sophomore against an outstanding defensive player in Beck. Watch him get to the paint and then has the hang time and the ability to not rush his release. Boy, so many times I see guards make a quick move and then rush the shot at the end. Watch him. He penetrates with quickness and then hesitates and gets his shot to drop. That's huge. Is it ever? And he caps a three-point play. Epps. And now Beck on a runner. And Kentucky couldn't ask for more. They trail by 19 points, 35 to 16. And Rick McKenna says that's more like it because they've cut it to a half dozen of intermission. Halftime, the defending national champions leading the defending SEC tournament titleists. 
50 to 44 Arkansas. Deb Kaufman and Sports Smash is coming up next. Here's the point. Kentucky's bench was big. 21 pen, uh, points off the bench. This guy had eight of them. Yeah, Walker in the bench got all of the last 14 points for the Wildcats scored by those guys checking in from the sidelines. Look at that field goal shooting right there. Both clubs well over the 50% mark. The free throw shooting really favors Kentucky. They're getting a lot done off of the dribble. It's getting it to the free throw stripe. Arkansas not getting much done off of the dribble. However, their three-point shots are really falling with great effectiveness this afternoon. Rebounding about the same, and there's Arkansas converting those turnovers into points. The leading scorer is in the ballgame, Scotty Thurman, who only missed one shot the entire first half, and that was outside the arc, has 15. And Robinson with 10 as he started the game. Darnell Robinson, Roderick Rhodes, and Walker, 9 and 8. You see the rest of the scoring. Scotty Thurman has been the man, though, right there in the huddle as uh, he was 3 of 4 from three-point range. And coming out, it'll be the starting lineup for Arkansas, Robinson, Thurman, Beck, McDaniel, and Williamson. And Kentucky will counter likewise with Riddick and Shepard, Delk, and Rhodes, and McCarty. And there's that bench scoring. Look at that, getting over half your points on the bench. You know, you got your depth, huh? <laughs> sure do. You know, I think it's very important for Kentucky to get off to a good start. They cannot allow Arkansas to spurt again to start this half because if they do, they're going to have to use a lot of energy fighting back. Rhodes trying to muscle one up and did. McCarty goes for the tip, and now it comes free to McDaniel. Thurman pulls up on the baseline. Only the second shot he's missed today. Last touch by McCarty to the Arkansas ball. And McCarty and Corliss Williamson battling for that basketball. Great effort by both clubs so far. That'll, that thing's going to continue. This game means too much. Number one seed on the line. And Robinson walked with it. The ninth Arkansas turnover. And now we'll see some full court pressure from the Razorbacks. Now let your 6'9 guy bring it up. <laughs> he does handle well, that's for sure. Very versatile is this club that Rick Bettino puts on the floor. They can beat you in so many different areas. Their defense is outstanding. They got that inside outside game. Inside right now is Riddick. And wave it off. He hit the shot, but they're going to call a foul on him. And now he's in a heat of foul trouble. That's four. Excuse me, that's his third. You want to get up and play? You're all right, I think. You don't believe him. Let's just sit up. Oh, you're the captain. Oh, Greg took a shot from now. Or he will take some charges. And still on the deck. It's the second or third charge he's taken today. Back. Oh, yeah, he took an elbow right to the front of the face. Like Herbie Hyde going down last night from Riddick Bowl. <laughs> Good double team inside, and that's what Kentucky, I think, did a great job of. That's exactly how you take a charge. But Kentucky did a much better job the last half of the first half, doubling down on those blocks. Forcing Corliss Williamson to kick that thing back out. Or he's going all the way down to the end of the bench to make sure he's got all his teeth, I think. I'm going to set him down. So Alex Dillard comes in to the Arkansas backcourt. Williamson, Dillard hasn't shot yet. And he came up short on a three. Rhodes. It's a four-on-one if Rhodes can find the handle. He'll do it himself. Forget it. It's going the other way. That's exactly how you draw it up for defensive purposes when you're the lone defender. You position yourself about four or five feet in front of the rim and take the charge. Big guns for Kentucky have misfired in the tourney a little bit. All of Roderick Rhodes' three fouls are offensive. Rick Pitino says, Roderick, you gotta have a little more control in midair. And we just see Pitino had it four fingers. That said he was we had a four on one. We got to convert. Yeah. You gotta use better decision making than he just did. Walker went for the steal and didn't come up with it. 
inside. Corliss Williamson. Riddick wrapped it away. Out of bounds. On the block to Arkansas. It's a third block for Andre Riddick. He came in with 36. Had three more. Corliss catches it, but the weak side defense of McCarty rotating over allowed the shot to be blocked from behind. Lob underneath. Good pass to Robinson. How big has Darnell Robinson been? This is probably his best game of the year. 12 points. That ends the game's longest scoring drop, which was a minute and 40 seconds before that layup. Walker. Got his own rebound. And he has 10. Bob underneath. Robinson, that's a tough one to handle, but he found it. Scotty Thurman. Finally missed the three. McDaniel sticks it back. But credit Robinson, though, for getting his hand on the ball and keeping the deflection alive for McDaniel to come in and scoop up. Eight-point Arkansas lead. Tony Delk waits for Williamson to fly by. And goes in, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Robinson picks up the foul. That's his third. Both, both teams are so good in transition. Watch Duck. You see the little ball fake froze the defender. And then Robinson, if you're going to foul at that point, you've got to foul hard enough to not allow that ball to get up on top of the rim. Robinson, 6'11", just kind of reaches in. Some fouls are better than others, and that was not a good one. And it's Tony Delk with a three-point play. And it's a five-point game. The last time it was a five-point game was 14-9. Could be a three-point game. Robinson off a miss, McCarty with a cheap one. After missing the shot, that happens pretty often. A little bit of frustration sets in. He swats Robinson over the shoulder. Well, that Kentucky press by Rick Pitino will absolutely eat you up. If you inbounds the ball in the corner to a smaller guard like Al Dillard is, you are asking for headaches. Thurman, Beck, McDaniel, Robinson, and Williamson on the floor for the Razorbacks who lead 54-49. Williamson kicks it out to Thurman. Working around the perimeter. Nice defense by Kentucky. Here's Williamson on the baseline, and he's fouled. Shepard will pick it up. That'll be his third. Kentucky foul on number 15, Jeff Shepard. His third personal foul, fourth team foul. Kentucky sends in number 41, Mark Polk, for number 10, Andre Riddick. So both teams piling up a few fouls here. We've got a long way to go. 17 06 left. Sends in number 25, Anthony Epps. Shepard will come 15, out, and Jeff Epps Shepard. will come in. Orlis Williamson, the All-American and the most valuable player of last year's Final Four. Steps to the free throw line. Six points and one rebound is all. That's a quiet day for him. Nothing quiet about his performance in the regular season against Kentucky. 28 points, nine rebounds, three assists, three blocks, and a couple of steals. You know, even when he doesn't produce big numbers in a game, he's still very effective because you think about it, if Corliss Williamson isn't the dominant player inside, Scotty Thurman's not able to spot up on that three-point line and, and stroke it about any time he wants. And Williamson got all of his field goals very early in the game, and you got to credit the Kentucky adjustment defensively for taking that power away from him down low. Arkansas by seven. Walker on the run. This kid is playing great. A rising star in college basketball right there. Antoine Walker. 12 points for Walker. Again, the lead is diced to five. Almost a steal for Pope. It will be. Last touch by McDaniel. Turnover Razorbacks. Watch Walker just beat Corliss off of the dribble, then stops and pops for about seven feet. A very difficult shot on the run. Executed well by the freshman. I got a 20-second timeout. With 16.41 left here, gives us an opportunity to remind you about the selection show coming up at 6 o'clock tonight. As you see, the turnover 
caused by Pope. John Saunders, Dick Vitale, and Digger Phelps introduce you to the field of 64, and they'll be joined by special guests throughout the country with their comments and criticisms on this year's 64 teams. Actually, they'll be talking about 63 because after that, we'll have another ball game that will determine the 64th entrant into the big dance. These two teams we know are both going, but whoever comes out of this one alive will probably be a number one seed. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't think there's any way they can both get a number one seed, but they both play like it. I'll tell you that much. They both might be deserved, deserving one. Well said. Battle for the ball. Delk wins it. Keep the Kentucky offense alive with 15 on the shot clock. It's Walker. Short on that one a little bit. Darnell Robinson will clear it out. The Razorback fans have been much more quiet than they were early when their team ran out to a 19-point lead. Kentucky defensively is really up on their toes now. In the first half, I thought they were playing from their heels. They're much more aggressive. There's a swat away by McCarty, but nobody there to pick up the loose ball. And that leaves McDaniel to drive inside. He had it knocked away. And shot clock went off. Kentucky's defense comes through. With 15 minutes and 43 seconds, Nolan Richardson's team still in front, but that look on his face tells the story. The lead's been cut to 56-51. They expect to win those close games, and they've done it very well throughout the season. McCarty and Walker, Epps, Pope, and Delk. A little different look again for Rick Pitino's Cats. McCarty wants it against Williamson. And kicks it back out to Delk for three. McCarty trying to tip it in. Comes out to Corliss Williamson. The pace has slowed a little bit. We were scoring about five points every minute in the first half. Now to three points a minute now. And just didn't think the pace could stay quite that high. Williamson had it partially blocked by Pope. He was looking for a foul call and didn't get it. Epps, he'll try a triple, and he's off the mark. McCarty got it back. It's a three-point ball game. Little big guys, Kentucky, very active on the glass. They keep it alive. They may not get the rebound, but they get a hand on it, allow one of their teammates to finish. Arkansas is out of sync, I think, on the offensive end right now. They're unsure of what they're doing. Yep, I'm with you. Thurman. He didn't miss much in the first half. Tip in goes. Darnell Robinson has 14. Yep, but he missed a three. Kentucky's missed its last three outside the arc. That last basket by Robinson snapped in almost a three and a half minute period without a field goal. Foul down low as Pope and Williamson were bumping around. You talk about from a coaching standpoint inside, if the shots aren't falling, you preach to your troops. Go get one off the offensive glass, and Darnell Robinson gets that big right paw on it and gets that thing to drop. Big fellow's playing a game today. He sure is. Number 25, Anthony Epps, and number 40, Alex Diller. Check in for Arkansas, and we'll get a brief. So for Arkansas, Dillard, Stewart, Williams, and Thurman, and back to inbound. Stewart to number 44, Darnell You got to come out on Stewart. He likes to shoot out there, too. Williamson double team. Rebound to Tony Dell. Kentucky again can cut it to three if they score. Blocked by Stewart on Pope. They got the ball. Big defensive stop by Stewart. Thurman behind the back. Williamson made the catch and the hoop. You made the point, though. Stewart in the lineup is going to open up that inside game for Corliss. That brings their other big guy away from Corliss. Doesn't allow that double team. 
Seven point Arkansas lead. Now their fans come to their feet. Shepard trying to drive on Beck. Found a little crease, but he missed with a left hand. Stewart, the outlet to Dillard, who might just pull up and take it. And get it! They know might in his game. He knows one thing, step up and stroke it. Alex Dillard never met a shot he didn't like. And all of a sudden, Rick Pitino says that's enough of this spurt. Arkansas stretches it back to a 10-point cushion. Down low, Thurman behind the back to Corliss Williamson. The defending national champs have pushed it out to a 10-point lead. A couple of big defensive plays for Arkansas. Stewart with a block and then the nice outlet pass to Dillard. That's what he does best right there. He's in the game for one reason. Pull up and pop. A 7-0 Arkansas run over the last minute and 55 seconds after Kentucky had cut it down to a three-point ball game. Coming up following our ball game, it'll be Newsweek's Champions Cup semifinal match. Sampras and Stefan Edberg live from Indian Wells, California. And you can also see the second semifinal. Agassi and Becker on ESPN tape delay tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern. That follows hoops. And we got great hoops going from the Georgia Dome. Tony down just inside the three-point line. Only his third field goal, though. Shepard comes up with a loose ball. Three on one. Shepard, Prickett. Got it. Chance for a three-point play. And just when it had gotten to 10, it can get right back to a much closer ball game. It's the defense. Now, if you're playing against a team that presses from behind like Kentucky, you've got to have guys following up calling Wolf or Red or Alert or something. This allows Kentucky to convert in transition to the reaction on the Kentucky bench, the chest to chest, the high fives. But you've got to have a trigger word. You're bringing that ball up, and you know the defense is behind you. One of your teammates has got to have a trigger word that lets you know to switch hands off the dribble because they're coming. Cricket with a three-point play, seven points and three rebounds for him. And again, it's back to five, 63-58, Arkansas with 12 minutes, 15 seconds left in the ballgame. Remots for three. He's perfect. Three for three outside the arc. Talk about a bunch of different ways to kill you. Man, both clubs. That's right. Eight-point game, and everybody in the dome just kind of sat down, took a big deep breath as if to say, we got 12 minutes left, we're going to need our energy. Well, Kentucky really spread the floor. Looks to me like they're wanting to get some more dribble penetration off their offense. There's some penetration, but a strip by Dwight Stewart, who's had two big defensive plays in the last couple minutes. Williamson behind the back. Corliss with a charging foul. That's his third. Good job by Shepard to hold his ground. Yeah, that's not the play that Nolan Richardson wants out of Corliss Williamson in transition. He wants the simple, smart pass. That behind the look pass, save that for later. 66-58, Arkansas still in front. These days, people who really understand money carry the Discover card. That's because the Discover card cashback bonus award is just that, cash. Everyone can use more cash, and there's no annual fee. That's why the Discover Card is the choice of people who really know the drill. It pays to discover, except it wherever you see the Novus Network sign. Sir, it's all over. The Whopper beat the Big Mac and the Wendy's single in taste tests. Uh, sir, the Whopper won, so please, go home. Okay, kill the music. And call security. cars and the one in your driveway could be the tires Bridgestone Potenza just think you already have the car my dandruff and itch are awful I'll try anything Denorex tingles 
Head and Shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Arkansas by eight over Kentucky with 11.39 left in the ballgame. Or we should say maybe left in regulation as we take a look at our stat smash. Arkansas, 10 three-pointers in 18 attempts. Scotty Thurman, 15, but he's cooled off a little bit. Yeah, he's missed his last three from out there on the perimeter. Look at that Kentucky bench, boy, 28 points. Antoine Walker with a dozen of that 28. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dykes with you at the Georgia Dome, the SEC championship game between the two best teams in the SEC and two of the four or five best teams in the country. Depends on who you listen to. Their fans will probably tell you they're both number one. Riddick. Air ball on a hook, and Beck comes out of the pile with it. Foul down low. They're going to call it on Riddick, who collided with Corliss Williamson. Riddick's upset. That's going to be his fourth. Corliss Williamson really does a great job of posting wide and low. He's not a tall target. He's a big spread out target like a big Sunday dinner. It's very difficult to get around him. That was a butt roast right there. That's what that was for dinner. Riddick went down, and that's four. He'll have to sit. Stewart off the inbound and again. Prickett has to appreciate his outside shooting and get out there on it. And Dwight Stewart is the best passer and best screener that Nolan Richardson can put on the floor up top. Freed up jump shooters off of Stewart's screens. Real key for Arkansas on their offense. There's one right there. Remind. Williamson off the backside. And now it's Polk with a huge rebound. Shepard's going to push it. Shepard's going to take it. Wave it off, though. Offensive foul. I'm not sure you can take a charge standing underneath the basket. Let's look where Stewart is. Yeah, he's there. He's in good position. Good call. Good call. Andre Matillo with the call. Shepard, tremendous lift, but that's the way you do it. Jeff's got to sit. He's got four. So it remains an eight-point Arkansas lead as we approach the midway point of the second half. Williamson trying to hook it back out to Stewart. He'll take the long jumper. Cricket ahead to Pope. Pope, can he beat Stewart to the hole? Yes. Beck and McDaniel both went to the offensive glass, and no one was back for defensive balance. 66 to 60. Here come the Kentucky fans to life again. Corliss Williams just muscled one up. And a great pass from Remox to improve his passing angle off of one dribble inside. Something small, but very, very important. Corliss with a dozen for the game. And has gone over. Here comes Beck with a steal off Rickett. Corey Beck does the little things that end up being big. Get it out of Rickett. Six on the other. I don't know if anything will match unless it's a U.S. in a gold medal game, what we're seeing today. This is fun. Rick Pitino doesn't think it's as much fun as Jimmy and I do right now because he's <laughs> down by 12. We talked about a three-minute run for Arkansas. That has been the story of the game for both teams, so Kentucky more than likely has one more spurt at least left in them. You know, Kentucky went to the free throw strike 16 times in the first half, only two second 20 minutes so far. You see Epps with a three. That might be the beginning of a run. Epps from outside, cuts it down to nine. Williamson jumps and misses, and Delta rebound. Delta says, Epps, get out of my way. McDaniel's enough for me to deal with. Enough that McDaniel went down, dealt for three. Prickett keeps it alive. Nice job by Prickett on the baseline. Delk's all alone on the backside. He wants the ball. They don't see him. They'll go inside instead. Wave it off. Thurman with a foul on Prickett before the shot. 
I don't know if many people really understand what both these teams face problem-wise every night they go to play because now Arkansas is the biggest game on everyone's schedule. Kentucky is always the biggest game on everyone's schedule. You watch Duck right here floating around that three-point stripe, really wanting the basketball. But from a coaching standpoint, you've got to find a way to work that to your advantage. If you don't want it to be a disadvantage to your club, you've got to have young people that respond to that type of a challenge. As Nolan Richardson has said this year, with everybody shooting at us every regular season game, it's made us tough at tournament time. They've been tough today. Epps missed that triple. And it's Darnell Robinson with a rebound. Maybe got away with an elbow. Thurman, three. Walker will clear it ahead to Epps with Delk and Pope with a three-on-one Kentucky. Pope for the finish. Down to seven again, 72-65. It just kind of looks to me like both teams would like to catch their breath a little bit. Yeah. They're tugging on those shorts. They're not as active in the transition game right now. Been a lot of energy used out here so far. Williamson underneath. And he muscled it back in on the second try. And even though these two teams had the first night of this tournament off, they had to win two games to get here. It's three in three days, and tongues may be hanging a little bit. 74 to 65, a nine point Arkansas advantage with 7 12 left in the ballgame. Shepard, McCarty, Polk, Walker, and Delk on the floor for Rick Patino. And Kentucky needs to put a run together. Put out of the final seven minutes. Almost threw it away. And did. McDaniel with a steal. And the layup, he missed it. Break for Kentucky, without a doubt. Pope backs up from 15. Williamson the rebound. His sixth. Kentucky content to slow things a little bit with a lead. Use some clock, get it down near the six-minute mark. Robinson, the one-hander won't go, and McCarty will clear it off. Colonel Robinson rushes his shot at times inside. He's got a big enough body to take control. Look at that, that guy taking control. Wow, sweet reverse layup for Tony Dell. it into Williamson. I thought he was in too deep. Maybe he was. He missed the shot and dealt the board. Delk takes a timeout. I don't think Rick Pitino necessarily wanted that timeout taken, but Delk was in a little bit of trouble on the baseline and couldn't find help. And yet to come, a flurry of 5.51 left here. At the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, 74 to 67, defending national champs lead the defending tournament champs. McCarty, good look down low to Walker, and he drew a foul. That's a tough, tough matchup for Scotty Thurman inside. Walker has the height and the jumping ability to get his shot off over Thurman when he catches it. The only way Thurman can stop Walker down low is to deny him the basketball, because once he catches it, you have to foul him to stop him. Okay, guys, we got two shots. So Antoine Walker, who had a big first half, has 12 points on the game. They go with four rebounds. Illinois' Mr. Basketball last year, and now shining off the bench for Kentucky. He only had three points in the regular season game between these two clubs. Didn't play much today. He's been huge. That's the luxury of having depth like Rick Pitino. You can allow young guys to develop over the course of the time and don't throw them right into the action, but he's got a good one in Walker. We were talking about the runs coming in three-minute increments, Jimmy. And now Kentucky's on one, nine to two. McDaniel almost lost the handle. Five-point game again with 5.15 to go. Ten on the shot clock. Kentucky would like to come up with a defensive stop. Thurman working for a shot against Walker. Had to rush one and almost knocked it in off the glass. 
comes free. Reggie Garrett has just checked in for the first time with the rebound. Fresh clock and under five to go. One of those kind of plays from a coaching standpoint, you force them into an off-balance shot and allow them to get the rebound. That's not the shot they wanted either from Dardell Robinson. A rebound by Walker. He's in trouble, and he hooks it out to Shepard. Shepard and McCarty two on one. McCarty had it stripped on the way up by McDaniel. Kentucky ball. Rick Pitino just threw the Armani into row three. Well, Kentucky has not done a great job of executing transition basketball today. You see right here, they don't finish. They're running themselves out of shooting position. I think they run to the baseline a little bit too deep. Here it goes. Rick Pitino handing it to my main man, Bill Kite. Billy. Billy made the catch. Talk about a guy that understands Kentucky basketball as well as anybody. Mr. Bill Kiley, the Kentucky equipment manager. He's only been there about a half a century, right? Oh, man, that guy <laughs> loves the game. He's terrific. Delk, three-pointer. It's huge if it goes. McCarty, did he push trying to get the rebound? No, they're going to call the push on Arkansas. I believe Dwight Stewart down low. There he is right there. We talk about a guy that lives and breathes for Kentucky basketball. He has seen it all from the days of Joe B. Hall to Eddie Sutton, now Rick Pitino. And there's not anyone in the state of Kentucky that doesn't have a lot of respect and a lot of love for that gentleman on the sidelines. I've never seen him not wearing blue and white. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't own anything other than blue and white. I've, I've been with him, I know. Arkansas scoreless the last three minutes in Kentucky trying to put a championship run together. Nice speed to McCarty. What a look from Dalton. Kentucky has had a lot of success today off of the dribble, breaking that Arkansas defense down. They got away from it, and now they're getting back to it. Look right there, Delk, creating a look inside for McCarty. He can finish when he catches it there. Four minutes left in regulation. It's a three-point game. Beck's in trouble. Got it to McDaniel. Now it's a three-on-two. Thurman off the glass. Got it. Excellent job by Thurman by not running himself into the baseline. Therefore, when he caught it, he still had the angle to use the glass. That is tough to teach. McCarty, sweet looking spin, but he didn't get it. And Stewart clears it off. Here come the Razorbacks. McDaniel wisely pulls it out. I think both teams have caught their second breath. They have. <laughs> they might need one more. We might not be done at the end of regulation. You never know. 3.25 to play. Five-point Arkansas lead. Walker broke it up. Beck fouled it. Watch right here. Watch where Scotty Thurman catches the ball right there at the block. Arkansas I see a lot of players will go ahead and continue to run themselves all the way down to the baseline. You've got no angle. Experienced players know how to score, and Scotty Thurman understands that end of the game very, very well. Kentucky back to the free throw line for their 15 of 20 on the day. That was also his first bucket of the second half for Scotty Thurman. That that's got to improve with your Razorback fan. There you see the free throw story as Kentucky has made more than Arkansas's attempted. And Walker, this kid who had over 2,000 points at Mount Carmel in Chicago, what a day to pick to have one of your all-time great games. He came off a career-high 21 yesterday, and today he's got 16. Trying to draw a foul, didn't. Walker with a little hand check does pick up the first. That happened right in front of Rick Pitino's bench. He won on the charging call. Corey Beck has such tremendous strength in his upper and lower body for a guard standpoint. Very difficult to bump him and get him off of balance. He's never going to have a lot of points for you, Corey Beck, I'm talking about, but. Five assists to go with his four points. He comes up with huge offensive rebounds, it seems, when he's down with the tall timber. You talk about Thurman, you talk about Corliss Williamson, but Nolan Richardson and the guys on those sidelines, they understand that this is the guy right here. We don't win without Corey Beck. 458 career assists for the 6'2 senior at a Fairleigh High School in Memphis.
visiting with Nolan Richardson about three weeks ago. He said, Jimmy, he said, the key for our team, I've got to get my guards hungry defensively one more time. One more time, i got to have them go out and shut people down. Right now, it's Arkansas by five with 3.13 to play. All the time. The only two teams I ever mentioned consistently we have on the same floor here today. I think they both got a nice chance of getting there. Shepard just dribbled it out of bounds. That won't help Kentucky's cause. Now, this may not be the last time these two teams meet right. this year. you got a great point. And now the Wildcats in desperate need of a defensive stop because the Razorbacks have a five-point cushion with three minutes left. Thurman has really been quiet in the second half, only two points. I credit the job that Walker's done on him defensively at 6-7. He's really shut down that perimeter game of Thurman. Williamson back it in, kicks it back out to McDaniel. Stewart way out for the three. He's a good three-point shooter, but he was about 24 feet away. I don't know if that's the shot you want in that instance. Guys out of his range. Walker on the run. Tips it in himself. Down to three. That guy understands shoot and go fetch very, very well now. Oh, you got to get a body on him. Quick jumper. Thurman, he squares for a triple. Missed it. He was red hot in the first half. He's cooled off. Tony Delk on the run. Leaves it for McCarty. He's got a chance to tie it up. Williamson fouled it. I think we might see the depth of Kentucky starting to take over because you look only one defensive player back. You got some tired guys right now on the floor for Arkansas, and Corliss doesn't make the hard enough foul to stop the three-point try right here. That Kentucky bench, they come in with a lot of quickness, a lot of numbers. Boy, great finish, great concentration by McCarty. Fourth foul on Williamson. Waller McCarty, 10 points on the game. For the first time since it was 7-7, we're tied with two minutes left. This is what we expected, and we got it. Now, you got to expect Corliss Williamson to at least touch it in this possession somewhere on the floor. He had it in hand and got it back out the back. Let's see if they pack it back into him. There's the spin pass. Williamson wheels on Pope. He got it! Chance for a three-point play. That's a pretty simple call right there. You got a guy that could arguably be the player of the year. Kentucky foul on number 41, Mark Pope, his second personal team night. Look at Corliss Williamson catch it. Now watch. He doesn't get himself in a big hurry. And that's the strength and the finesse that you don't find in many guys at 6'7". That is a very unique combination. He was actually underneath the basket, Brad, and leaned back in and got the shot off. For those of you just joining us, it's 80-78 to 78 Arkansas. Corliss Williamson had a chance for a three-point play there and didn't connect. It's a two-point ball game with 90 seconds left in regulation in a game that Arkansas in the first half led by 19. They led by six at halftime by as many as a dozen this half, but the Wildcats won't quit. McCarty, three. Pope trying to tip it in. Dwight Stewart, a huge rebound. Two-point ball game, and we have one minute left from the Georgia Dome with 30,000 plus looking on. Championships are won by teams that can go out and for one or two possessions get a stop. Now, both of them are going to have the opportunity to do it. Arkansas, they're 1-0 right now. That was a big defensive series for them. Just as you said that, I saw Jeff Shepard, the look on his face, and he made two clenched fists in front of Scotty Thurman as if to say, we got to come up with one. Three on the shot clock. McDaniel's got to hustle one. Kentucky got their stop. Time runs out on the shot clock. There Good it is. Good call, Jimmy. That's what you got to do. You've got to have guys that will shed their ego for about 35 seconds and say, I'm going to lay my big Valentine out on the line and stop somebody. Only a second and a half difference between shot clock and game clock. In essence, Kentucky can play for the win or overtime right here. 
Shepard, he's going to go straight up with it. Hope, and he's fouled from behind by McDaniel. So Pope's going to step to the free throw line, where today he struggled, but on the year he's been excellent. Well, great hands by Pope to get that one right hand on it, and then just get it, the action going back up towards the basket. Watch Shepard off the penetration. Attracts a lot of attention there, allows Pope to come inside. The guards for Arkansas didn't rotate inside quick enough on Pope to keep him off the boards. Mark Pope off the bench today with seven rebounds to go with his eight points. 77% on the season, but only one for four today. Nailed it when it became big, though. This one would tie it at 80. Sometimes you cannot bear to look, even when it's your teammate at the line. Or if you're just one of the many Kentucky fans, it's hard to peek through as well. Hope for the tie. Here's your game with 20 seconds left. This is national championship stuff right here now. It does not get any better than this at any level. The defending national champs tied with the defending SEC tournament champs. The MVP of the final four just threw it away. Walker calls timeout. It's Kentucky's final timeout with 5.5 left. Walker came up with a huge loose ball. Corliss Williamson had it tacked down low and tried to kick it back outside, and the pass was straight. And now Kentucky can win it. I don't know if somebody got a hand on the pass. As SEC tournament champion, Arkansas still looking for their first tournament title. 80 to 80 with 5.5 left in regulation. The ball belongs to Kentucky, so would the win if they score. Roderick Rhodes. He might be the man. Whistle. Foul inside. Foul on McDaniel. And Roderick Rhodes with the biggest free throws of his season upcoming. Well, that's just what I talked about. There's a guy that really got it done in the first half, in particular, off of the dribble at 6'7", and can put it on the floor with great efficiency. He can get you to the free throw stripe. Roderick is five of six from the strike today. Well, several guys collapsed on him right there. All his points came in the first half. Roderick Rhodes, the 6'7 junior, has maybe got a chance to win it for Kentucky, but Arkansas is going to make him think about it. They take a timeout. Kentucky has battled back from at one point being down by 19 in the first half. They trailed by 12 at one point in the second half. And now they're 1.3 seconds away from pulling a stunning come from behind win for Rick Pitino trying to win his fourth straight Southeastern Conference tournament title. And here's the man that can do it. 78% of the season, five of six on the day. Been there more than any Kentucky Wildcat all season long. Came in with 129 attempts. Anthony Epps is not the only guy in the building praying. First one came off. If he misses this one, we'll do no worse than overtime unless Kentucky can get an offensive rebound. And if Arkansas gets the board, they've got 1.3 seconds to launch it. Kentucky had hit 14 straight before that miss from the line. Rhodes, maybe for the win. He missed the second. Williamson, overtime. I told you we had all we expected, and then five more. We're going to OT in Atlanta. Roderick Rhodes will never forget those free throws. They won't matter if Kentucky wins in overtime, but if they don't, that might have been their shot at the national champs. <laughs> Trying to pray one in, but it didn't go. All right, Deb, 
Five more left in a thrilling SEC championship final. 80-80 as we go to overtime, and Riddick and Williamson will get it underway. Try it again. John Clockerty says, I threw it too high. Rick Pitino lost the coat about 10 minutes ago. He's never lost an SEC tournament game. And his chance, his club with a chance to draw first blood here in the extra standing. Walker's been huge today. White Stewart runs down the miss. Kentucky's only two of 15 of their three pointers today. Williamson doubled. See if Beck goes back into it. There it is. Doubled again and fouled. And that might send somebody to the bench if it's Riddick. Nope. The foul will be on McCarty. Watch Corliss Williamson. He attracts the double team, but very important to note the double team is not coming from Dwight Stewart's man. He's positioning himself at the high post area, but they cannot leave Dwight Stewart. Therefore, he's not leaving the offense. We talk about some concerned looks and people thinking about what if. And a guy on the right of your screen there that had two free throws that maybe could have wanted and missed yeah. them both. Corliss Williamson doesn't miss his. 19.7 boards. Got a feel for Roderick. He's 78% free throw shooter. You got to figure he's going to get at least one of those. But maybe this game was destined to last longer than regulation. 20 points for Corliss Williamson. Just another day at the office for Corliss, even though he started kind of slow. 20 with seven boards. <laughs> Delk from downtown. Rebound back. Three on two. Beck does it himself. That's huge defensively. Somebody's got to get back and stop the dribble penetration. No one did, and Beck split the defenders. Delk, three pointer. That one's way off, too. Three pointers just won't go for Kentucky. Watch for it, Beck. You're taught as a point guard. Push it, push it, push it till someone stops you. Nobody does. Take it to the rim and finish. You did it well. Kentucky, a team with 243 three-pointers on the season. They had 17 in one game against South Carolina, and today they just can't buy it from outside the arc here in Atlanta. Yeah, and they're very effective from the outside. They shoot almost 40% as a team, so it's just one of those afternoons. Credit Arkansas's quickness on the perimeter defense, though, it's had something to do with it. Huge three-pointer by McDaniel. Seven-point lead, seven straight in OT for Arkansas. The shot selection for Kentucky, the last two possessions, has been questionable at best. Delk, I think, has forced a couple. Thought about one there, and now drives for one off the glass. It's a better look. That snaps the run by the Razorbacks. 87-82, 240 left in overtime. Big fella handling on the way up. Maybe no team in the country that's got better big men as far as ball handling than these two teams. Yeah, I tell you what, that really helps you out because those point guards, they don't get worn down over the course of a 40-minute basketball game. Not a lot of clubs have that luxury. MVP of the whole thing last year, 22 today. Delk, jumper baseline, rattles out. Stewart has had some big rebounds. There's another. Two minutes to play. 89-82, Arkansas. The first half, it was 50 to 44, and we looked like we were on a 90 to something pace, and now we're back on it again as we're in overtime. Beck uses some clock. Five on the shot clock as he scoops one. Got it. Chance for a three-point play now for Walker. Arkansas had a nine-point lead. 
with this back double pump. Corey Beck just dribbles through everyone and gets his own look, and it's a strength that he has. You watch Kentucky answers, though. Very aggressive basketball team, and the look right there tells you that Kentucky bench got a handful. Timeout, Arkansas, with 1.32 left. And a seven-point Razorback lead. Big Ten title and a trip already sewed up. Orless Williamson. He had another huge game today. And he stays in the huddle before he heads to the bench because he's fouled out. And Roderick Rhodes has not been in in overtime since missing the two free throws with 1.3 seconds left in regulation. Wallace Williamson's day is done. He can only watch now and hope that his teammates can pull it out. Meanwhile, Antoine Walker has been certainly nothing like a freshman today. Walker trying to add his 21st point, caps his three-point play. Six-point ball game with a minute and a half left. Kentucky got the turnover. I feel say they've kind of played around with that press now the last two or three possessions, trying to force it into big guys. And that Kentucky defense is relentless now. They are not going to let up on you. Kentucky trail by as many as nine here in overtime. They can cut it to four if they score on this possession. Walker really wants it against Thurman. Now it's dealt. He has struggled from the three-point line today. Walker, tough catch, adjusts in midair, pulls with a tip in. It is down to four, and McDaniel is fouled by Shepard, and Shepard's gone. Kentucky foul number 15, Jeff Shepard. That's his fifth personal foul. Watch Walker catches the ball in great position to shoot. Creates his own look there at the end, then Pope comes in again. Anytime that ball goes to the block, if you're a perimeter defender, you've got to make a beeline for the front of that rim and get your body in front of someone. Shepard becomes the second player to foul out. Leaves with six points all in the first half. He fouled out of the regular season game between these two teams as well. He gave up the quick foul there to send Arkansas to the free throw line with 1-11 left to go. Clint McDaniel, 16 points on the day. Clint McDaniel, One for two from the free throw Rangers. line, but he's hit 27 of his last 32 free throws. So he's not a bad guy to send to the strike if you're an Arkansas fan. But it rattled out on him. There's the two players that have fouled out. Roderick Rhodes, who hasn't, but missed free throws at the end that would have prevented this extra five minutes. And McDaniel missed them both. So Roderick is not alone in missed free throws in crucial situations. We're down to a minute. This has been the man today. Only a freshman, but Walker missed it. And Robinson, the rebound. Thurman with the outlet. Jimmy and I almost had a souvenir. Kentucky is still forcing a little bit on the offensive end. That time Walker took a very difficult shot. Tony Dunk took three or four. At this point in the game, you still got to allow that offense to get you and create you some good looks. You can't force it too quick. Four point ball game, 53 and a half seconds left. And Dunk with a foul. Again, to send McDaniel to the line. For Rick Patino's club, they come in 24 and four and all those four losses been by a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine points. Every game. And the people they've lost to have been no slouches either. Clint McDaniel to the line for Arkansas, two shots. I'd say what that Kentucky and Arkansas, both those jobs now, in my opinion, for the head coach, they're the best job in the country. 
and the worst job in the country all on the same day because you have all the resources, everything you want to win a national championship. But it's expected of you. The pressure, the expectations, very tough to live with. Uh, Clint missed his last two, but he drained those two. Six-point ball game. And now Kentucky might have to start thinking about threes, and they haven't been falling here in Atlanta. Here comes one. There goes one. Foul on Pope. Kentucky wasting no time sending the Razorbacks to the free throw line. Yeah, what a great job by Kentucky to free up Delk. They ran a little back screen for him from the weak side, allowed him to float to the wing. Look right there, that's a back screen being set for him. They throw over the top. He gets his feet squared and nothing but the bottom. Didn't just happen, that was a, that was a cold play. Corey Beck now, the man of the moment at the free throw line, where he's two for two today. Doesn't matter what you are at the free throw line at this stage, things get a little bit tighter, and you know there's a tremendous amount of fatigue out there, and that can make you short sometimes from the line. And Beck was. Better. Nolan Richardson thinking, am I going to see another SEC tournament title go by the boards? And his team still leads by three. Beck missed them both. Can you believe it? I go for the first good shot I get. If it's a three or something off the dribble. There it is underneath. That's a good one. Yeah. Walker cut it to one and now a steal by Kentucky. And McDaniel fouls X. And McDaniel's gone. Brother. I just talked about Arkansas falling asleep on their press offense. Watch the basket go, and then Arkansas steps out of bounds quickly and throws it right into the coffin corner. You got to keep that thing out of there. Great job by Kentucky in the press. Corliss Williamson looking on. The worm's eye view. The bird's eye view looks pretty good, or at least better than it did a little while ago. Arkansas 93, Kentucky 92. The regular season score, Arkansas 94, Kentucky 92. Epps will step up to the free throw line. 83% free throw shooter with ball in hand. For the tie, got it. Nobody wants it more than that guy right there, do they? You know it. Kentucky hasn't led in this game since it was two to nothing. Now they do. Arkansas can play for the one shot that would win it for them. Here's your ball game in overtime. 94-93 Kentucky. Scotty Thurman's got five game-winning shots in his career. One against the Wildcats earlier this year for three. Short, Kentucky's going to survive, it looks like. And already they're storming the court, but there's .6 left on the clock. Backing cameras, fans, and players away. The foul was on Corey Beck. It's probably academic. The winner in the regular season game scored 94. Kentucky has 94. We talked about making defensive stops and winning championships. Kentucky that time forced Arkansas into a shot that was probably a little bit out of Scotty Thurman's range. I noticed Nolan Richardson told Thurman after the shot, hey, you had a chance to maybe take him off the dribble, try to get to the free throw strike. The 95th point and maybe the 95 SEC Tournament Championship just went through from Tony Delk. And Roderick Rhodes is going to be the first one to lay a hug on double zero if he hits this one. It came out. But Arkansas can't get a shot away. Kentucky wins. 
the SEC tournament title and a number one seed to the big show. They lock that thing up, and Arkansas now will fall to a two seed, but do not be surprised to see those two teams meet again. It's everything that 30,057 in person thought it would be, and millions more across the country got to see a classic as well. Patino and a four-peat. Kentucky wins its fourth straight Southeastern Conference Tournament Championship. And they do it with a come-from-behind overtime win, 95 to 93. Wow. Roderick Rhodes missed a couple of free throws that maybe would have ended it before overtime. And then he watched as Tony Delk hit a big one that won it in overtime. He's not happy. He's very, very relieved. He might be in shock. I'm not so sure I'm not. What a game. Jimmy, it was fun. Yeah, it was a great time. Some tears rolling down Roderick Rhodes' cheeks. Tears of joy. The final in overtime for the SEC title, Kentucky 95. Arkansas, 93. Wow. For Jimmy Dykes and the entire crew on the Deuce, I'm Brad Nessler. Thanks for watching. Saying so long now from the Georgia Dome where Kentucky's been crowned the SEC Tournament Champions one more time. Let's go to Deb Kaufman. Deb, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Brad. What a great way to wrap up championship week here on ESPN2. Kentucky has never lost an SEC tournament game under Rick Pitino. Some of you will see tennis next, semifinal action from the Newsweek Cup, and some of you are headed for Expedition Earth. That's it for here. I'm Deb Kaufman. We'll see you later. Don't forget the NCAA selection show on ESPN, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Thanks, Deb.